In the last video, we had just started a scan of the Mutilidae website. The Mutilidae website is an intentionally vulnerable web application, and we're running it on a Docker container here on my local host. So because this is a uh, intentionally vulnerable web application, we do expect to find a number of vulnerabilities here. The scan is completed, so let's take a look at the information we have. I'll drill down into the scan results. And it shows the vulnerabilities in a couple of areas. One is right here. So we only scanned a single host. If there were multiple hosts, they would be listed below. We get a breakdown of the vulnerabilities by severity level. So there are four high, um, high severity vulnerabilities, 13 medium severity vulnerabilities, etc. We see the same breakdown in the pie chart here. So we can drill down either by clicking here or by going to the Vulnerabilities tab. And there are a number of things here that, that I'm interested in looking at. This top one shows that there are multiple vulnerabilities associated with PHP MyAdmin. I'll drill down and I'll drill down again. And it detected that PHP MyAdmin is installed um, on this web host, but it's not password protected. So that's obviously a, a big risk. There's a description of the vulnerability. It lists uh, a, a solution. Obviously, that's a pretty short uh, version of a solution. doesn't give you a lot of details. Uh, but it does include additional references that might give you more information as well as some output about how it verified that that vulnerability existed. We can also see over on the right hand side some information uh, about the risk itself. So it says risk factor high and it tells you what the CVSS base score is. So let's go back to that vulnerability group and go to the next PHP My Admin vulnerability. So this shows that it has an older version of PHP MyAdmin installed that happens to have a SQL injection vulnerability. So again, we get a description of the vulnerability. We have a solution, additional references, how it validated that that vulnerability existed, and the risk information. Uh, actually, I'm a little surprised by this. The CVSS v3 score uh, is 9.8 here. Um, which to me that would put it up at a risk factor critical uh, and it's only listing it as high. So that may be because it, it says that the temporal sco score is a little lower. The other item here is just informational saying that it detected that PHP MyAdmin was installed at all. That doesn't necessarily represent a risk if assuming it's up to date and it's password protected um, I probably wouldn't put PHP my admin on a public facing web server, but you know, I, I can see why some people might. Um, so that's just informational. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's a vulnerability, but it just wants you to know because there are security implications. So let's go back to the list of vulnerabilities. Let's click on the next one here. It found a SQL injection vulnerability. Again, uh, we have the same details that we did for the other vulnerabilities, including how it was, uh, you know, basically what it found that led it to believe that this might be vulnerable to SQL injection. Uh, basically, it got an error message here. It says uh, in the output, it says you have an error in your SQL syntax. So clearly, uh, whatever whatever attack the Nessus scanner tried was able to manipulate the SQL syntax at least enough to cause an error. So you might need to look into it a little bit deeper to really understand the vulnerability here, but in, in all probability there is a vulnerability there. And so on. So at this point you want to share this information with your teammates and you probably want to share this information with your manager just so you can say hey we need to devote some time to addressing these vulnerabilities to mitigating these problems however as i said 
there's only a single uh, set of user credentials used to access Nessus Essentials. And anyway, I have it running on uh, a virtual machine on my desktop, so it would be difficult for them to access anyway. But you can generate reports that you can share around. There are a number of formats. I'm going to pick PDF. The executive summary, I will say, is really light on details. So it's basically just a breakdown of, of the number of vulnerabilities detected and their severity levels. So I would choose custom report. Uh, you can probably leave all these checked. It's a little, little bit of information overload, uh, but it, it's not bad as a default. And you can click generate report. This actually does take a minute, so I've already generated a report to show you. And it's essentially the same information that we got through the web interface uh, with all the same details. So, you know, this is basically what the executive summary would show right here. It's just this bar with, uh, with all the, the, the vulnerability counts in each severity level. But now we have all the details here about the SQL injection vulnerability that it found, some ideas on how to mitigate it, additional references, and, and so on and so forth. And that is about it. However, I will say that the Mutilidae app uh, is something that we can access without any authentication. Now, you can log into the site. There, there are places to log in, and then you can access uh, other parts of the application that are not available to an unauthenticated user. But we can access it and scan it as an unauthenticated user. If you have an application that's behind authentication, uh, you may run into more problems scanning that. If we go to configure this scan and go to the credentials section, there are some options here to provide some authentication details. So we can give it um, credentials, we can tell it where the login page is, we can even tell it how to uh, confirm that it is successfully logged in. However, depending on the complexity of your web-based authentication or whatever type of authentication you're using, I'm assuming on campus, it would normally be shibboleth, this could become a problem for scanning. It could get in the way of scanning. So you could set it up so that there is, uh, you know, on your dev or test environment, maybe you can bypass shibboleth for scanning purposes. Uh, but as an example, uh, there's another vulnerable web application called DVWA that does require authentication to access it. And I'll talk a little bit about some of the um, problems using Nessus to scan that site in the next video.